A Secant Filament is the number one exotic I haven't touched nor explored since it first released, and this wasn't because I lost interest or anything, no. For once in my building life, I didn't know how to build around it and create something really interesting based around it. It's taken me a bit of time, thinking, a lot of videos and threads to see just how good the exotic can be when placed into a well thought out setup, and now I'm glad to show off my results from my research. Meet your new endgame build that plays a bit more outside of the meta that we are so familiar with. But you know what else is outside the meta? This channel right here, and I feel like I've mentioned that line before, so sorry folks. So if you want more stuff like this in the future, then leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications as it would really help me out on the channel. I would really appreciate it. So subclass will be using Cataclysm Nova Bombs for big and quick damage, and the subclass setup should focus on recovery speed for fast rift energy. Everything within the subclass needs to focus on getting our rifts up quickly, so we can make use of the Child of the Old Gods effect, Devour, and the Exotic Boots themselves. This should be relatively easy if you farm for the right armor stats needed for this, but if not, then I have some alternatives to mess around with. A Feed Void allows users to get health back if a target is killed by a void ability and can be extended as long as you follow up straight after. Child of the Old Gods allows users to create a Void Soul that will track combatants, damage and drain them of their health and give you back some ability energy or health if you are empowering. It will also give you class ability energy back if the Void Soul outright kills a combatant. Your Fragments should be Echo Remnants which allows our grenade to stay out for longer, Echo Explosion which allows Void ability final blows to cause targets to explode, Echo of Undermining where Void Grenades cause a weakened effect on combatants, and Echo Obscurity, where getting the finisher turns you invisible. The stats will be 17 Resilience, 19 Recovery, 19 Discipline, and 14 Intellect. Key mods to have are Battle for One for 2 Elemental Well Drops, Frontal Wisdom for a 50% Intellect stat boost, Seeking Wells for turning Elemental Wells into Tracking Wells, Reaping Wellmaker for creating Wells and Kills after using your class ability, and Elemental Ordnance for creating Wells via Grenades. You may be thinking why I've gone with two devour based perks instead of the one, and the reason for this is to secure our survival when one key ability is out of use. If we use our rift and die before fully getting it back, then we can use our abilities to activate said skill, and vice versa for ability use. This here covers the need of not requiring key mods or perks that focus on health regen, as we can rely on the two instinctively. With how powerful the setup is, I can see this not being a big issue unless you play Grand Masters and play certain Nightfalls that would require the user to stay on the move as best as they can. Nonetheless, the subclass options are the best for covering all sorts of activities you may get yourself into, especially Echo Obscurity, which has a high value rate for getting out of trouble quickly for users. For weapons, you have a variety to pick, and these are my favourites to use. At primary, we have the Wither Horde, which is great for ad clearing and is capable of doing continuous damage on a single target if it's direct. As our boots give weapons the ability to be overload while on a rift, this allows us to not only free up our arm slots, but also pick and choose what weapons you want to use, even if it doesn't have a corresponding anti champ mod to it. This is why I chose to use Wither Horde, as its effects are simple, easy, and very strong in high end game based activities. Honestly, if you haven't got this weapon yet as a new light, get this as the number one to start with when you get the ability to do so. For secondary, we have Doom of Chelchias from the raid, and this is a must have weapon for void based builds in general. A great weapon that can get some fantastic perk option combos, such as Focus Fury and Vorpal, or Adaptive Munitions and Frenzy. Ideally, a damage based role would be better as you can combine that with your Empowered Rift and perhaps form the might for even more harder hits. However, having a version with Adaptive Munitions means you can easily break down all elemental shields without the need of other corresponding elements in endgame. Overall, a perfect weapon to use for this build as you want to keep your distance while using it, and the ability to craft it for multiple perk combos can provide some fun outtakes whether you go with it or not. For Heavy, we have Quilliam's Terminus, which is a good heavy machine gun to use if you want to take out combatants in one shot and within a few hits. If you get one with Killing Tally, then keep it, as the damage alone from it can destroy champions within a few shots compared to other heavy machine guns in game. Although the weapon isn't that great against bosses, and I would highly recommend you keep it away from them unless you have the ammo to spare. 
any other heavy machine gun is fine to use as well here if you have a preference or you can go ahead and use a rocket launch instead and then clean up via your wither horde or secondary of choice the method of doing so is down to you your stats should be fairly easy to cover as you only need to get your recovery speed up and the rest of the stats will fall in place recovery should be aimed at 70 to 100 with 70 being the lowest and only if you have additional mods available to support the stat further with the use of child of the old god we should be able to fairly keep our rifts going one after another as long as we weaken combatants and then let the old gods do the rest it will at the same time also provide health back while betraying others so on top of the devour times two we can sustain ourselves on our own without the use of others helping us nearby basically this could be used in solar dungeons as an alternative to solar, although you will need to tamper with mods as well just to be sure. Elemental Wild will help support all of our stats at once upon collection, and so will Absolution via Orbs of Power. I would say add on the Bolstering Destination Arm mod to the setup, as you will be getting Class Ability NG back via Grenade Damage, and if you use Vortex Grenade, then it's even better. But only do this if the activity you're playing doesn't require an extra champ mod. The discipline is at 90 and just like recovery, you want to aim as high as possible so we can make full use of our abilities all at once. We will be using vortex grenades and debuff multipliers to really pull in the damage numbers while using everything at our disposal. So having this stat at near 100 is going to make your life a lot easier and better in the end game. On top of that, the bolstering detonation will be helping you recover class ability energy per grenade damage tick and Ashes and Acids will be giving us the much needed boost towards our super. Only thing left out is perks that can get our grenade back faster, but that is something that's not overall required if you can consistently net kills. Leftover mods, we have Harmonic Siphon for an orbs of power via matching elemental gear, Machine Gun Scavenger for more ammo and reserves, and Sunning Glare for a 20% damage debuff against distance targets. So, let's top this all off with a quick rundown of the mods used and where they were allocated within the build. For Head, we have Resilience, Homolux Siphon, Ashes to Acids, and Powerful Worm mod. Arm, we have Recovery, Bolstering Detonation, and Thunder Wisdom mod. Chest, we have Discipline, Concussive Damner, Thermal Shot Plating, and Seeking Worlds mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Absolution, Heavy Machine Gun Scavenger, and Reaping Worm Maker mod. Bond, we have My Resilience, Sunring Glare, and Elemental Ordnance mod. The best way to describe Secret Filament is that it represents the best of both worlds in terms of function, application and usefulness in higher endgame content. There is quite a few exotics from the top of my head that focus primarily on Rift use, such as the Stag, Starfire Protocol and Sanguine Alchemy, but none of them match what Seekent could offer, as the ability to do increased damage while also getting Devour at the same time allows users to play outside of their comfort zone. As, let's be honest, when was the last time you used Empowering Rift in Endgame? As long as we net kills, which is pretty easy to achieve, you can constantly keep your health afloat and not die within 3 shots or less in something like DMs. On top of that, you also have the ability to create Child of the Old God to spawn, which can cause havoc when placed in a small group of combatants. This one ability will drain, debuff, and slow all those caught within it and will also give you back ability to class ability NG back on kills from it. Now think about this, this is also allows you to drain combatants ability NG and use it against them, empower you and allies and also give devour on demand. Yeah, this is a top tier exotic that has its place with other godly warlock gear in game. And the great thing about this exotic is that any weapon loadout is fine to use with this. You don't need to follow what I have on screen. In fact, you can go with whatever primary, secondary and heavy you like, and the effects of this setup will stay the same. I've chosen to stick with Horde as it's great with add clearing and interact damage, while Doom of Chelchius is great voice scout with an all rounder stats and perks to pick. This is what I'll be using for any hardcore activities I decide to play, but you don't need to do the same, which is great for those who don't have the exclusive gear locked behind even tougher content in the first place. Now, bad side of the build as a whole is that you can't use it out in the open on much higher content, and I do mean this. As you are using Empowering Rift to activate the exotic, you will be vulnerable in terms of damage applied to you until you get your devour ability effect working. 
So make sure you use this behind some cover so you can feel safe to use it until you get everything in gear and in place. Overall, the build is what you would expect to use if you ever hit endgame and want to play outside the meta no doubt you're familiar with. It has great uptime, damage and survivability but only if you know what you're doing. If you can keep your distance and focus on a pure damage setup then I can see this build being suitable for you from here all the way to the future and it definitely ranked in my top 10 for this season onwards. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like, a sub and turn on your notifications and also follow me on Twitter if you like a bit of banter here and there. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.